All right, we've just finished laying all the insulation, and uh, now what we're going to do is start on the carpet itself. Uh, one of the things that I did is I laid the carpet outside in the sun uh, for a couple hours. Uh, being that it was just jammed into a box, um, you definitely needed to uh, help it uh, soften up and get it smoothed out. I made the first cut uh, right down the middle where the uh, transmission hump would be uh, and that was in, going to enable me to do a halfway decent dry fit. Uh, the other thing that I did is I marked, I, I overlaid the old carpet and I marked where the holes were but I think they may be off just a little bit so thankfully I used a, a black sharpie you really can't see it uh, unless you look really close and then um, you know that's pretty much what I did uh, so right now we're gonna start on the carpet and we're gonna move over to the next section okay time for the carpet install and what I did was a dry fit uh, as you can see there is a slice right down the middle and I'm gonna start uh, trimming up a little bit but what I am trying to do right now is let the carpet uh, cool off a little bit and also relax so that I can start uh, really tucking it into the, the corners and getting the edges because this is preformed in some areas so I want to match how things are formed. Uh, there are some bumps and stuff and you never mind all the little gremlins and dust bunnies on the carpet itself. That may be one of the negatives of getting a dark color like this. A lot harder to keep clean, but outside there's a lot of pollen, the trees are starting to bloom, and there's a slight breeze, so crap keeps blowing on it. But that is the dry fit. What I'll start doing is finding where the various holes are. You might or might not be able to see where I made uh, lines for a flap where wires will come through and I think that may have to come down a little bit thankfully that's going to be underneath the seat so you won't see these things that'll be covered by the rail and the seat and uh, this will be covered by the center console so I want to be very careful but this is where you're gonna measure twice cut once uh, you will have some extra that you're gonna be trimming off so before I really start trimming I'm gonna make sure that I get it right uh, maybe I won't have to trim or if I do just a small amount so when you trim if you have to trim trim just a little bit at a time then get it to fit if it needs more trimming I'd rather trim a couple times than trim once and screw up uh, because then you've just wasted in this case a hundred and fifty dollars now I was complaining about this particular carpet because it is awfully thin with virtually no backing. If I had spent $50 more, I didn't see it. There is a carpet uh, for just over $200 that has the thick backing very similar to the OEM. And I think I might recommend that. Uh, this is very flexible. It's easy to get into place. It's lightweight. I've been able to do this by myself. So, in this case, this may not be a bad thing because I do have this insulation underneath. I did lay, uh, where is it? They gave me some extra pads, so I laid a couple pads down as well uh, as a, another underlayment uh, where the feet will go. So, that is about it for now. I'm going to start the trimming process. Really no need for you to watch me do trimming. I'll probably do a couple quick cuts. Uh, on the video so you can see the progress being made similar to what I did when I did the insulation and that's it for now okay I'm still working on getting the carpet in uh, as I noted I did my first cut down the center and I think what I'm going to do uh, is put the center console in first and then I can smooth everything out and then trim the edges but what I'm doing now is cutting a little flap in the rug that will be underneath the seats and bring the seat connections out. I also have under seat lighting. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but 
I wanted to bring those through as well. And they'll come up through here. This is the module. And this will plug into the lighter in the um, center console. And it has a switch to turn on and off right there. And gives some nice underseat lighting. I wanted to have that a little bit more permanent. I could wire that in to the car so that when you turn on the lights of the car, it, it turns on. But I'd rather, you know, be able to set the mood when I want, uh, though it does have a remote control as well somewhere. Um, you'll notice that I've already done the other side and slowly working my way around. Uh, the fit bothers me a little bit. I keep pulling it to the edge here and, you know, it looks like I'm going to have to trim a little bit, which is okay. But before I start trimming here, I want to make sure that the center is in tight and the back. Uh, there is some buckling and I'm trying to figure out how best to do that uh, without cutting too much. Now I know that most likely I will have to cut off about that much uh, in the back. But I'm doing it little by little, uh, little trims. It's, you know, measure twice, cut once, as I've said before. And uh, this is going to be a little bit slower process, but that's okay. It is coronacation. I still have another week of quarantine for myself since I have the potential of being infected uh, due to my daughter having two people uh, that tested positive in her office. So little by little, what I'm going to do is make sure these are out. I'm going to start trimming underneath here, bring this around, uh, get this all set, and then I will place the center console. Uh, I'm bringing the trim back in once in a while to make sure to see where it actually covers so I know what I can and cannot trim. So when you do this, definitely take your time. Work back and slowly getting things uh, into place. There is the driver's compartment. I have the trim on the left and the right side. I have the center console back in. And actually I just slumped that side there. I've got to tuck that back underneath on the uh, passenger compartment, but uh, getting in there pretty good. So I'm about halfway done. Now I've got to get the edges and get the trim up and then of course the back. Uh, so that's where I'm at at this moment. I think things are really starting to shape up. And there you have it. All the trim and the back seat is in. Let me go around the back of the vehicle. And not bad. A few things hither and yon that uh, as I get more experience, I will redo over, but there's the final trim pieces. And I'll be putting the driver's seat in next. But one of the things, I've got a, one area here that's just a little loose, not too bad. Uh, what I might do next time that I do something like this, number one, I will be getting the thicker backed carpet. Hopefully the molding is better. And the other thing that I will do is maybe use a little bit of spray adhesive in certain areas to keep the rug up, especially the vertical areas where you can see it's definitely slumping a little bit. I'm gonna pin this down. Um, I still gotta get this a little bit better underneath here. There's a slight buckle. But overall, I'm pleased. I'm definitely pleased with the way it looks uh, in comparison to the old dirty light dove gray uh, rug that used to be in. So there we go. I think that'll complete this particular project for the video uh, because seats in, you're not gonna be able to really see what it looks like. Uh, otherwise, that's it. And yeah, there's my puddle light. And uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe.